Oh, it's not that oh, smooth. No, no, no. I know. No, it you know, you really need, I know. Fast. You need to, um, I'm sorry, I can't work this it, way. It was <laughs> yesterday, though. I guess. Five wow. Yeah, I five you get like a five o'clock shadow on your noggin. It's really cool. No, I love it. It's good. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm kind of geeking out right now. I'm, I'm sitting with <laughs> two of the loveliest ladies ever. Um, Kelly Maroney, Catherine Mary Stewart, and one of the best movies ever made, Night of the Comet. I'm so geeking out right now. <laughs> Can you guys talk really about... Nice. I totally, totally... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is like my favorite area ever. Are you we <laughs> live for geeks. I grew up in a family of geeks. Yeah, you did? I'm, okay. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I thrive on cool. geeks. What, what is it about the geek culture that you like? Well, like I said, I grew up on it, so it's very familiar to me. Okay. And a lot of geeks kind of like Night of the Comet. Mm -hmm. So yes. how could that be bad? <laughs> it's like a lot of stuff. I'm almost, and they're almost all geeks that mm -hmm. watch my movies and stuff. So, and I was when I was growing up, I didn't know that there was such a thing as being a geek. I just thought there was stuff that you liked. So I didn't even know. You got the video game thing going in this movie. Yes, did, I do. did you? Okay, did you actually play it? What? How? How good were you? Oh, at that I was game? so good at this game. I really learned it for month. No, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> they put that in after the fact, and I was never. You know, I did Pac-Man, I guess, at some point, oh. but. But um, video games were never my forte. I, but it was real. Their whole thing was, okay, Kathy, really get excited about it and move your feet around. And you notice how they do close-ups? Of, I swear to God, somebody in that movie, whether it was the director or the DP, a had a foot fetish. Because they always went down to the feet. Mm -hmm. and we're like, ooh, acting with our feet. So uh, that was, they were like, do a thing with your feet. I'm like. Okay. <laughs> I was a dancer originally, so I thought I could I can handle that, you know. But um, no, I, to answer your question, I had no idea what I was doing, and n nor was there a game on the screen when we mm -hmm. when we shot it. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole point of that scene was Kathy was supposed to look, be looking like she was having sex. It wasn't the game. Well, yeah, but that's you can say that a lot of, about a lot of scenes. True. So true. It's having sex. Honest to God, I was 16 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I had sex in the you know projection room. That is true. That is <laughs> with my clothes on apparently. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, isn't it always the way it is in movies? It's like what, no, it, just... what it was was it's showing my female dominance over who the hell's DMK. Right. Yes. Yes. I was yes. woman. Hear me roar. Mm -hmm. This was way before. Nowadays, we got Buffy. We got all these strong women characters. Back then, especially in these kind of movies, there weren't strong characters. And you both were lethal ladies. Hey, I worked it in. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. What, what, was it. what was it? Did you did you see that when you guys were playing these roles? Or did you just... No. <laughs> It was just another day at the office, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, well, it was Ripley. Ripley. If you look back at the history of movies, there was a time when, you know, we've gone far. Women have gone far in the country, obviously. But if you look at the movies of the 40s and the 50s, there's Barbara Stanwyck. Mm -hmm. There's all these amazing women who mm -hmm. carried the movies, and they sold no those movies. No questions. Well, and historically, all the men were at war, and there was Rosie the Riveter, and women did have to do everything, mm -hmm. and it just was mm -hmm. a reflection, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, now, and then the 80s and the 70s, mm. it, it became a man's world and in the, film. All of, well, in the 90s it became. Uh. But I also think there's this whole trend now with movies where, you know, whatever has hit the most recently, there'll be 12 more of those yeah. movies made. And that I think historically that has been true to a certain degree. But in the 80s when we were doing these fun things, there were so many different kinds of movies popping up all over the place. And, and this, I think, was a really unique take mm -hmm. on, on, you know, it was, yeah, you, you can't even really categorize it. Yeah. No. And that was yeah. one of the issues when we were shooting it. Like, what how is to categorize it. Yeah. Is this a comedy? Is this a, a, a scary thing about the end of the world? Is this ridiculous? Is, let's do one for laughs and let's do one for serious. And one producer thinks it's a movie about the end of the world. The other producer thinks it's funny. And Tom Eberhardt wrote it, and his take on it was, you know, it, it, it's, is it, it's social sort of commentary. It's a social commentary, but it, it's sort of tongue in cheek, you know. Mm -hmm. you, let's not take this super seriously, but they, uh, there was, you know, they still weren't sure, like on the production side, the producers, if it could sell as a horror, sort of social commentary, tongue in cheek thing, we should go to, for the basic 
horror thing because we know that works.